desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 427, offered by Ms. Delbene of Washington. Page 18, line 13, insert after means any rule the following other than a special rule. Page 19. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read, and the gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, last year, we heard from Professor Ronald Levin of Washington University Law School on the RAINS Act, and he testified that the bill's requirements would greatly impede agencies' ability to carry out their mandates through rulemaking because of the great difficulty of obtaining the active concurrence of the House, the Senate, and the President, especially in a highly polarized political environment and that the act may be unconstitutional and that it would revive the one house legislative veto that the Supreme Court has held to be unconstitutional. Moreover, we witnessed just this week a mechanism that's already in place for Congress to take action when it's dissatisfied with agency rulemaking, the Congressional Review Act, which some of my colleagues are using to oppose the FCC's net neutrality rules. Luckily, not everything the FCC does is so controversial. Demand for wireless spectrum is growing exponentially with the dawn of the Internet of Things, and Congress has taken some productive steps guiding the FCC in meeting that demand. In 2012, Congress came together and charged the FCC with administering a number of spectrum auctions with the goal of making more spectrum available for unlicensed services. And some of us are continuing to work in this area. I'm pleased to be a co-sponsor this year of the Wi-Fi Innovation Act with Congressman Issa and a bipartisan group of our colleagues who recognize that there's a role for the FCC to play in ensuring our spectrum policies help our country remain competitive. To give the committee an idea of where the FCC's had some success, um, we have the AWS 3 auction, the Public Safety and Spectrum Act, tasked the FCC with auctioning 65 megahertz of mid-band spectrum for mobile broadband use. The FCC successfully completed this auction, bringing in net proceeds exceeding $41 billion. The, the Public Safety and Spectrum Act also preserved the FCC's authority to promote competition through spectrum aggregation limits and other rules. And the Broadcast Incentive Auction, Congress authorized the FCC to conduct incentive auctions through which the spectrum licensees can voluntarily give up spectrum usage rights in exchange for a portion of the proceeds. This auction will take place in early 2016. And to stay on that timeline, the FCC is expected to adopt a public notice in the next few months containing the detailed procedures for the auction. Um, Congress directed the FCC to work with the National Telecommunications and Information Administration to explore ways to allow new unlicensed services in several parts of the 5 gigahertz band. Last year, the FCC acted on this directive, freeing an additional 100 megahertz in the 5 gigahertz band for unlicensed services. So we have many examples where it's been important for the FCC to be able to move forward quickly. Um, I urge my colleagues to support my amendment and allow the FCC to effectively and efficiently exercise its congressionally created authority under Title VI of the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2012. And I yield back. Chair thanks the gentlewoman and recognizes himself in opposition to the amendment. Once again, there is no reason to shield any given set of regulations from the congressional accountability protections the RAINS Act provides. This is as true of FCC regulations relating to spectrum auctions as any others. Remember, this bill does not prevent agencies from taking action in the public interest. It merely gives Congress a chance to fulfill its constitutional role before the regulations become law. The Constitution provides that all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress. This is not some legal formality. It is a rule that provides substantive protections. It ensures that major decisions affecting the public are made by an entity directly accountable to the public. That does not happen when unelected agency officials are making the decisions. The more important the rule, the more important it is that Congress and not an agency impose it. The RAINS Act provides a vital check on bad agency decision-making, and that check should not be eroded. The question occurs Mr. on the Mr. amendment offer. Mr. What Chairman, purpose the gentleman from Michigan seek uh, recognition? I'd like to speak in support of the The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Uh, I, I think the Del Benet Spectrum Auction Amendment uh, has some validity that needs to be re-reviewed uh, after her 
or presentation. Uh, in 2012, Congress passed the Bipartisan Middle Class Tax Relief Act, which contained provisions to expedite the av availability of wireless spectrum for accessing the internet over mobile devices. Last year, the Federal Communication Commission finalized major rules to implement the Spectrum Incentive Auction, which according to the Government Accountability Office, allowed market forces to determine the highest and best use for Spectrum to benefit consumers and telecommunication services. And as a result of this major rule, FCC raised a record-breaking $44.9 billion through a Spectrum auction in January of this year, demonstrating the inherent value of wireless Spectrum and the importance of a fle flexible rulemaking process to allow the market-based delivery of Spectrum. And in, in addition, the chairman of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, uh, 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 the results of the auction confirmed the strong market demand for more Spectrum. Not only will this auction improve wireless connection connectivity across the country, it will also empower greater competition and success among commercial stakeholders. Chairman Wheeler also noted that the success of the Spectrum Off auction confirms that there will also be strong demand for valuable low band spectrum that will be made available in the incentive auction early next year. And, and so, uh, my friends on the committee, uh, this sh amendment should be supported, uh, which will ensure that the FCC's rulemaking authority to administer future spectrum auctions is not imperiled by the RAINS Act. It is imperative that the FCC retain its rulemaking authority to meet our country's demand for internet access over wireless devices. And that's why the Del Benet Amendment should be supported by all of us. And thank you very much. The question occurs on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Washington. All those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. Penny the chair, the noes have it. A record vote. A recorded vote is requested and the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Goodlatte? No. Mr. Goodlatte votes no. Mr. Sensenbrenner? Mr. Smith? <coughs> Mr. Shabbat? Mr. Isa? Mr. Forbes? Do you guys have amendments on these other two bills? Mr. King? No. Mr. King votes no. Mr. Franks? No. Mr. Franks votes no. Mr. Gomert? No. Mr. Gomert votes no. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Poe? Mr. Chaffetz? Mr. Marino? Mr. Marino votes no. Mr. Gowdy? <coughs> Mr. Labrador? Mr. Labrador votes no. Mr. Farenthold? Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins votes no. Mr. DeSantis? Ms. Walters? 
Mr. Buck? No. Mr. Buck votes no. Mr. Ratcliffe? Mr. Ratcliffe votes no. Mr. Trot? No. Mr. Trot votes no. Mr. Bishop? No. Mr. Bishop votes no. Mr. Conyers? Aye. Mr. Conyers votes aye. Mr. Nadler? Aye. Mr. Nadler votes aye. Ms. Lofgren? Ms. Jackson Lee? Mr. Cohen? Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Piloisi? Mr. Piloisi votes aye. Ms. Chu? Ms. Chu votes aye. Mr. Deutsch? Mr. Gutierrez? Ms. Bass? Mr. Richmond? Ms. Del Bene? Ms. Del Bene votes aye. Mr. Jeffries? Mr. Jeffries votes aye. Mr. Cicilline? Aye. Mr. Cicilline votes aye. Mr. Peters? Mr. Peters votes aye. The gentleman from California? Mr. Issa votes no. The gentleman from Texas? Mr. Poe votes no. Has every member voted who wishes to vote? The gentleman from Ohio? Mr. Jordan votes no. The clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, 10 members voted aye, 14 members voted no. And the amendment is not agreed to. For what purpose does the gentleman from